Okay, we have our ship. It turns. That's very good. Uh, but when I push the up and down key, well, <clears throat> since we're going for the asteroids control scheme, when I'm pushing the down key shouldn't give us anything. But the up key should. And when I push the up key, right now my ship's pointing to the left. It should move to the left. So remember when we added the rotation, I said, well, we'll come back and throw the position back in. So let's do that. I'm going to go here. This is where we apply the rotation matrix to our individual vectors, and that's what makes the triangle turn. Um, but we, in order to get the ship to move again, it's really not that difficult. Let me bring the coordinate system back up here. And our original vertices of our ship are 0.1 here. Or no, it's a little bit more than 0.1. We fixed that in the last video. And then it's out here, and then it's out here. We connect these, we fill them in, we get the nice white ship, so on and so forth. Well, remember, these positions... <coughs> are really represented by vectors. They're mathematical constructs that by now you are familiar with addition, okay? And we used addition to position the ship before. And now you've seen rotation with the, by changing the basis vectors using the rotation matrix. So, so let's say we do the rotation. We're really just rotating the vectors. So let's say we run rotate um, this direction, a negative direction. So so we this green vector rotates to here, and this green vector, I'm going to guess, will end up right about here. And this green vector, this last one, will end up right about here. Maybe. And then um, connect these and fill it in, and we have our ship, except our, except our ship has turned. So let me just fill this in best I can. You can hopefully see our ship rotated, the end result of applying that rotation matrix to every single vert individually. All right, but I want to move the ship. So what do we need to do? We'll, we need to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to go back to our vector addition and and say the ship's position. Well, remember, the ship's position is represented by a vector. So let's say our ship position. Oh, you know what? I'm going to, that's too thick. I want to go back to thin. Let's say our ship's position its position vector is over here. Let's say it's just right there. Okay, now you can think of position as a dot, but it's really just a vector. It's the displacement from the origin, even though it's kind of a wavy displacement. Think of a nice, perfectly straight line here, vector. So if I want to move my ship over there, well, it's the same as what we did before. We just need to do vector addition to these three vectors that make up the corners. Let me add them back in. So here's the first vector, makes up that corner, and Here's the second vector makes up that corner, and then the third vector makes up that corner. And if you think about it, this blue vector, let's just do this individually. The blue vector plus this vector that goes backwards, I'm going to guess, all I have to do is pick this vector up. If I could pick it up with my hand and put it over here, you'd see the end result. So let's say, let's say this is the tip of the blue vector. So that vector plus the green vector, this first green vector, one, one, the end result will be right there. Now the blue vector plus this vector, well again, pick this vector up with your hand, and there we go, there's there's two, two, and then same thing here with this one, you know, three, there's three. I'm trying to draw these as close as I can, but I am human, so for, and I'm definitely not an artist, so there we go, that'll, and then all we gotta do is connect them, connect the dots, and then if you want I can I can fill this in again. Why not? It might be fun. But all we have to do is add our position vector, this big long blue vector, to each of our individual vectors that make up the corner of our ship. And we've moved the ship. Okay? So first we're going to apply the rotation operator, this matrix, against the verts. And then after we're done with that, one by one, we'll, we'll uh, just add our position to it. So let's do that. I'm going to say ship position plus and then I'm going to rely well I don't know it might be more readable if we add parentheses even though they're not required multiplication has higher precedence than addition so control F5 build this run this let's get the ship up here on the screen and then I can still rotate that's nice okay right now we can't really tell because our triangle is pretty well it's pretty uniform but right now it's pointing to the left Okay, pointing to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. I'm going to push the up arrow, and what would you expect to happen when what is going to really happen, and what would you want to happen? Pause the video, think about those questions. What do you expect to happen? 
what's really going to happen, and what do you want to happen. Pause the video and think about that. Okay, I'm going to push the up arrow, which should accelerate us. And remember, we're pointing to the bottom left-hand corner. Here we go. And we're going nowhere. Okay, why? <laughs> why? Well, remember we have this code commented out here. Okay, so we should probably bring in the code to do it again. All right, point at the bottom left. That's actually not what I expected to happen. That's why I was laughing. I forgot I had that commented out. Okay, point at the bottom left. Push the up arrow, and the ship is going up in screen space, but it's actually going right in ship space. Let me bring it back on the screen again here. So turn it to the bottom left, and you see how the right side of the ship is... The right side of the ship is this side of the ship. And so we, point, we hit that, that up arrow, and sure enough, it takes us up in screen space coordinates, which is... Maybe you expected that, maybe you didn't, but um, we said the velocity in the y. We're, we're changing the velocity in the y direction. In y direction, we rotated the ship, but the y here, this y is still in screen space coordinates, so y is straight up. Ugh. How are we going to fix that? Well, this is where unit vectors come in handy. Unit vectors, and we talked about these a little bit before, and I've called them normalized vectors. They're vectors of length 1. So, I think the reason why we call them units is, no matter what your units, it's the length of one unit. So, if you're measuring in miles, it's going to be one mile. If you're measuring in kilometers, it's one kilometer. Measuring in centimeters, then it's one centimeter. It's whatever your unit is, it's length 1. Now, we can use those vectors. Uh to do some interesting things, but the most interesting thing I think is the place where it's most common and we'll use unit vectors a lot is because we're interested not necessarily in their magnitude but in their direction. Okay, remember vectors are made up of magnitude and direction. That should be old hat by now. And sometimes we're only interested in the magnitude. And sometimes we're only interested in the direction. And sometimes we're interested in both. But we need, in, in this case, we're interested in the magnitude, okay? The acceleration says how fast we're going to accelerate, all right? If you push the gas pedal, you're going to be 0 to 60 in, in 8 seconds. Maybe that's reasonable. But that doesn't tell you necessarily which way you're going to accelerate. Maybe you're going to accelerate north or accelerate west or northwest or yeah, yeah, yeah. So 0 to 60 in 8 seconds, it only tells you the speed that you'll, you'll accelerate to. It doesn't tell you necessarily which way you're going to go. And hopefully which way you're going to go is important, at least so you avoid other obstacles and other vehicles. So here's a magnitude, but we're failing to do a direction. We're just assuming Y is the appropriate direction, which it is not the direction that we are interested in. Well, how can we get the direction? Remember, the ship, the at least as far as the graphics go, the graphics know the direction. Do you remember where that direction we do you remember where we stored that direction? We stored it in a matrix. Okay, so we can do a few things. We can well, there's several approaches I think to get the direction out. And it might be educational to show all of them to you and compare and contrast. So so I think I think we'll do that and I think I'll save that for the next video because it's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of work, but it'll be worth it.